Hey guys, turkey normally steals the spotlight at Thanksgiving, but we can probably all admit that there's a side dish or two with a special place in our hearts. Mashed potatoes, yams, green bean casserole. This week we're taking all these normally supporting players and giving them the starring roles they deserve. Let's get down to basics. Basics with Babish and the all-new basicswithbabish.com are brought to you by Squarespace. Head there now to check out recipes from the show, kitchen equipment lists, my personal blog posts, and more. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order with offer code BABISH. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. All right, guys, so let's start with mashed potatoes. Traditionally, the script reads for us to mash them with a potato masher and mix them with butter. But we're gonna flip the potato script, and I'm sorry, this is the last time I'll say that, by sous vide the potatoes in their own private butter bath. Don't you wish that you could say the same about yourself? So into a vacuum sealed bag goes three large russet potatoes, one and a half sticks of butter, salt, white pepper, and one entire cup of heavy cream. This is Thanksgiving, folks. It's the one time it's socially acceptable to eat like this. So being very careful, we are vacuum sealing all these fats and starches together into one beautiful mass and dropping into a 194 degree Fahrenheit sous vide, the temperature of which you might need to maintain using a clean kitchen towel as a sort of sous vide swaddling cloth. Then 30 to 40 minutes later, we are now removing our very tender potatoes, which we should be able to crush effortlessly using our gloved fingers and pouring through a fine mesh sieve. Might have to crush these up a little bit into manageable pieces before pressing them through, creating a potato mash that is very fine indeed that we want to whisk minimally Minimally, just enough to incorporate the butter because we don't want to build up any gluten. Into a serving bowl they go, smoothed out, and served with the headline that mashed potatoes will never be the same. Because from this day forth, they shall be known as palm puree. But what about yams? You know, that part of your Thanksgiving dinner that's actually dessert? Well, while we are going to prepare these a little bit more traditionally with one and a half sticks of butter, half a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of raw or demurra sugar, and a solid tablespoon of cinnamon, and maybe a teaspoon and a half of freshly grated nutmeg, we are going to dress it up in some new and exciting ways. Into a generously buttered casserole go three peeled and sliced yams, a generous pinch of kosher salt, and our sugar butter mixture. It would probably be easier to mix this up in a bowl beforehand, but it's Thanksgiving. We're trying to cut down on dishes, right? So once we've given that little mix, we're covering and baking at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes, and then we're going to give them a good mix and return them to the oven uncovered for another 15 to 20 minutes, during which time I'm going to pour some boiling whiskey over some craisins and let them soak until the sweet potatoes emerge from the oven, at which point we're going to top them with some ricotta cheese, a healthy serving of our whiskey-soaked craisins, and some toasted pecans. And if you want to go really crazy, how about a nice healthy drizzle of honey? Now take a look at that and tell me that you'd rather have the stuff with marshmallows on it. I mean, I would totally eat the stuff with marshmallows on it, but variety is the spice of Thanksgiving. All right, now that I've officially gone off the rails, let's make some green bean casserole. We're going to start by making homemade French fried onions by cutting two large onions in half, slicing them thinly in a mandolin, and dousing them in about a cup of buttermilk. We're going to let those soak for about 15 minutes before draining and coating in all-purpose flour. Once those are evenly coated and the excess flour has been shaken off via sieve, we're bringing these bad boys over to a relatively tepid bath of 300 degree Fahrenheit vegetable oil. These onions have a lot of moisture in them and they're going to cook very quickly, so a lower temperature deep fry is preferable. We're letting these go for about seven to nine minutes until they are gorgeously golden brown, crisp, and a hell of a lot better than anything you're ever gonna get out of a can. We're going to lightly season them with kosher salt and try not to eat all of them before they end up on our casserole, but admittedly, this is a challenge. Next up, we gotta make some gourmet cream of mushroom soup. We're starting by stemming, crushing, and finely chopping eight ounces of cremini mushrooms. Once we've got everybody stemmed, squashed, and sliced, we're bringing the whole party over to an awaiting high-walled saute pan with about three tablespoons of butter a bubble in. We're then gonna saute the whole affair together with a generous pinch of salt that's gonna help draw the moisture out of the mushrooms. Once all this moisture has evaporated, we're going to add one heaping tablespoon of flour. We're gonna saute this together with the mushrooms and the butter, forming a rudimentary roux for about one minute before adding two cloves of crushed garlic, sauteing for another 30 seconds, and then deglazing with a little bit of cognac, flambéing if desired. Oh my god, make sure you take out the wooden spoon. Wooden spoon in the pot. Get it out of there. Little known fact, wood is flammable. We're then going to add about a cup and a half of chicken stock and one cup of heavy cream. Mixing together, bringing to a simmer, adding a little dash of soy sauce, a trick courtesy of J. Kenji Lopez Alt, and simmering until dark, 
thick, rich, and the best cream of mushroom soup you've ever had. Then we're going to prep our green beans by cutting off the stems and slicing into one inch pieces, which we are going to parboil for about two minutes until bright green and then shock in an ice bath. These are going to be baked, but not long enough to cook them through. So once we've drained them, we're mixing them together with our cream of mushroom soup and maybe half of our French fried onions. I wish you could smell this, but well, YouTube technology is just not there yet. Once combined, we're pouring into a generously buttered casserole, covering and baking at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes or until bubbly. We shall then uncover, sprinkle on the remainder of our French fried onions, and cook for another 5 to 10 minutes or until browned and bubbly. You know, the two greatest words in the English language. Now for this one, I don't have the patience to do a traditional tracking shot. I gotta dig in right now. This is one of those few things in life that it's absolutely worth it to burn your mouth on. This is my absolute favorite Thanksgiving side. It's also my dad's favorite. He just got out of surgery, and I'm super excited to go home and make it for him and all the other people that I love. Because that's what Thanksgiving sides are really all about love for your dad, for yourself, or for your camera crew. So from me and mine to you and yours, happy holidays. I will see you next week when I'll be making turkey and pumpkin pie from a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. And buttered toast and popcorn and pretzels and jelly beans and ice cream sundaes, I guess. So I just want to talk a little bit about designing my new website with Squarespace. They have this really intuitive, easy to use platform that made it super easy even for somebody like me who's never done web design ever. They have templates, they do domains, they have really good customer services, really an all-in-one, one-stop shop for building a really slick website and I was really happy with the way mine came out. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter offer code BABISH to get 10% off your first purchase.